Hey everyone, it's a uh, Friday night around 11.30. Um, I had a pretty good day. Uh, today, uh, as I talked about a couple of days ago, I'm going to explain what happened at the um, immunology clinic appointment that I had on Wednesday. I was released from hospital on Sunday after spending a week in ICU uh, with pericarditis. Um, I was very sick, um, again, and I was very, very fortunate to have a team of people, including cardiologists, rheumatoidologists, immunologists, um, thrombosis, uh, any type of, of anything that you can imagine the team was there and part of and making decisions and um, we finally got answers that I've been looking for for a really long time and uh, I think those of you that know me um, are aware that I've been looking for a very long time for reasons for things that have happened in the past year and a half with my health, um, a little bit with my personality too. Um, on Wednesday, I was diagnosed with a disease called CVID. Um, you will see me referring to some notes here just because I want to get all the information right. And I, I made the notes for myself as well, just because being in healthcare, I, I may have a little bit more knowledge, but most of my experience is in mental health um, with a little bit of trauma nursing at the beginning. So... I, uh, I'm not aware of, of this stuff, um, so I felt just as lost and <sighs> lost and afraid at the same time because I, I didn't know what was going on and um, it was scary. It's been a, it's been a scary year. <sighs> so on Wednesday, um, we went to the clinic at McMaster. And I saw um, an amazing physician. His name is Dr. Sear. He is the uh, immunology specialist that will be taking over my care. Oh, sorry, cat's here. Um, what does CVID stand for? Um, it stands for Common Variable Immunodeficiency Disorder or Syndrome. Um, even though it says common at the front, it actually isn't that common. Um, and the variable part means that it affects multiple systems within the, within the body. And the immunodeficiency means that I just don't have the ability to fight off infections in those specific areas in my body. Um, I have very low levels of immunoglobulin, which is responsible for uh, making antibodies that fight infection in your body. Um, it is a... Uh, disorder that is one of, uh, of over almost 200 immunodeficiency disorders. Um, sort of the broad term is primary uh, immunodeficiency disorder. Um, so the CVID is a subset of that um, primary immunodeficiency disorder. And the reason that they know that uh, now is because of the multiple infections multiple illnesses that I've had over the last year and a half and the positive testing for the um, uh, antibodies that just don't exist. Um, they're not there and they're um, the ones that were there um, are decreasing and it is a lifelong illness. I will have to get treatment for this my whole life. Um, there are two types of treatment. Um, both of them suck, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, one is uh, every month uh, you go for six hours and you get um, immunoglobulin uh, infusions for that six hours. Uh, immunoglobulin is made up of over... Um, over hundreds and hundreds of donations of blood. Uh, it's a part of the plasma that they separate from 
um, the rest of the blood uh, products uh, in the sample. So in order to get, you know, the amount that they need for you specifically, they have to take it from so many people. So um, depending on what your symptoms are, uh, if you have an infection at the time, uh, they measure that and they sort of estimate hopefully how much will be effective enough to help you fight the infections. Um, that's the first uh, uh, way of treating it. The second way of treating it is a little bit more, um, I think, invasive, and I'm not ready for it quite yet, is uh, where they put a port cath underneath your skin, and every two or three days uh, you get hooked up to a pump uh, for an hour and a half, and they pump uh, the antibodies into you and you do it all yourself. It's completely self uh, set up. But like I said, at this point, I'm not quite ready for that. Um, when I do go back to work, I, I, I don't know if that would be feasible as opposed to a once a month uh, injection. And even though it's an you know all day thing, um, it's not something that I have to do to myself or anything else. So we'll, we'll see about that part. Um, the, the issue with replacing the um, immunoglobulins is that they only have the technology to replace one, and I am low in all three. So even if treatment goes the way that it's supposed to, and I feel better, and I am not getting infections, I'm not in hospital every couple of weeks, um, no more damage to my heart, um, because of the other two that don't get covered, you have to continue with the treatments regardless. Um, it's something that will affect the rest of my life um, forever. It's in addition to treatment that I'm already taking that is lifelong treatment from my uh, blood disorder. Um, with CVID, um, there are certain body parts that are affected. so. Uh, you have your uh, ear canals, your sinus uh, cavities, your mouth, your throat, uh, your esophagus, your lungs, um, your skin. Um, uh, very sensitivity, uh, very sensitive to uh, cold and heat and sunlight. Um, I have to uh, not tan ever again, which you know kind of sucks. And I like tanning. I like going away but I'll just have to be careful um, I have to when I do uh, get the go ahead to travel again um, I'll have to make sure I get my you know injection or infusion rather and then leave shortly after so that all of my immunities are high at the time that I am at most risk which are th on things like planes and uh, hospitals and malls and stuff like that so um, the cause is 90% unknown. They don't know. There is a 10% genetic marker for it, um, which I did test positive for, um, but I don't know if anybody else in my family does. I know uh, without giving out too much um, medical information about other people, um, I do have cousins and sub-cousins who uh, suffer from immunodeficiency disorders uh, quite severely, actually. Uh, and... Um, I have a feeling that, that that potentially may have just made its way into my body and just came alive. The interesting thing is, uh, in 2014, I had a physician who uh, looked into it, and I actually did test positive for the, um, for the immunodeficiency disorder then, um, but nobody followed up. Um, and that was in 2014, which means that over the past five years, if I had known that there was an issue and then all of a sudden all of these issues had come up, it may have turned out differently. I don't know. I can't guarantee that. I can't um, I, I can't predict what could have happened if. I can only go on what's happening now. Um, I will still need to get my B12 shots every month because it does affect the absorption of B12 as well. Um, I have to be very careful, very, very careful that I don't get cut, that I don't um, get a cold, that I don't get, 
even a simple ear infection, which is, you know, these are things you can't prevent because they're, they're everywhere, but um, I have to wash my hands very frequently. Um, I can wear a mask in public. Um, I can do that and, and, and I feel okay um, with that. Uh, I just, I just don't want to get sick before Wednesday. And I know that seems like, oh my God, it's only like four days away, you're not gonna get sick. But somebody like myself who's sick all the time, um, I just, I wanna start treatment well. And um, treatment initi initiates on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. I'm going to be vlogging it uh, as long as they allow me to, I have to ask permission. Um, just, I won't put anybody's faces or anything in it, just the procedure itself and what it looks like and everything like that. Cause I've been looking up stuff and it's, it's not, um, it's, it's this, it's people talking about it, but not really showing the reality of how it affects, um, your everyday to, day to life. Take example for today. Um, I went to a doctor's appointment this morning at the thrombo clinic with my mom. Then we ended up uh, going to an afternoon bingo, which was really sweet, and we had fun and laughed, and um, it was just something funny to do uh, during the day. We both hollered bingo, <laughs> which was fun. We didn't we didn't win much, but um, it was it was just fun to be there for sure. Um, and then I got home, and I had planned to. Uh, do some shopping and stuff like that and I passed out uh, when I got home literally like this is gonna be TMI but like I drooled all over myself I was that tired I fell asleep and then I woke up around 7 um, still tired but had to get some stuff done uh, had to drop off some scripts um, for medicine, for the injections that I can get. And then uh, I came home and started playing around with my new camcorder and whatnot. Um, another question that I got too is, like, what, what does this mean for you? Like, what, what, what does life look like now that you have this CVID, um, or CVID for short? And I don't know yet. Um, I'm so optimistically hopeful and yet scared to even think that this might work and it might make my life easier and healthier. Um, so I, I'm, I'm caught up because, you know, the doctor said some people take three months to feel better, some take just one infusion and they feel better. And the first thing that usually comes back is energy. And I have had none of that for a year and a half. It's been such a struggle. Um, some of the other symptoms, you know, like the sinus infections, the earaches, um, the strep throats, the, oh gosh, the pneumonias, the, um, the AFib, the lumps on my legs from the injections, um, chronic bruising, uh, night sweats. These are all symptoms of an illness that with treatment, I can potentially tolerate and live without having to always be afraid of, of the side effects that are that could happen. I mean, I've been away multiple, multiple times and I've seen doctors in other countries because I've somehow gotten myself an infection somewhere and I just didn't have the ability to fight it and would get, you know, foreign antibiotics and uh, and that I would end up spending money to see a doctor there. Um, so hopefully all of that will stop. All of the, I'm hoping too that maybe some of the, um, and, I, and I was talking to the Thrombo team about it as well and maybe some of the complications from that side as well, which is sort of in a different category of like, just having to deal with doing the, the injections every day and the, the sores that develop and stuff like that. that, that may not happen anymore, right? So I'm hopeful, um, I'm scared still, I'm, I'm processing the fact that 
I will always have this illness um, and I will always have to plan my life accordingly in order to keep healthy and with support and with treatment I do believe that I can live a semi-normal life um, will this be something that will end my life prematurely it's possible it's possible there's a huge chance of uh, cancers in those areas that are affected so your sinuses your lungs your stomach and all that um, there's there's a much higher percent chance of of that but um, I can't think about that um, I have to think that there's a plan and the plan in place sounds pretty good excuse me my voice is dry It sounds like it sounds like everybody's come together and met and finally come up with an answer. And I'm grateful for that. Grateful that there's something that can be done, but still upset that it's something that I'm going to have to manage forever. Um, I haven't really processed it yet a hundred percent and I think keeping busy with things around the house and my resume and, um, vlogging too, I think is going to be therapeutic, you know, uh, cause I don't have anybody to talk about it with really like my mom <laughs> my mom is amazing um, but I can't rely on her all the time you know I'm 38 years old and uh, as much as she would be here in oh in a second if I needed her I need to learn how to be me with an illness um, and that's something that I think is internal. Um, I know I've been encouraged to seek out self-help groups. Not self-help groups, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess self-help groups um, for people with clotting disorders before they knew what it was. Um, so I don't know if there are any resources in the city or even on Facebook. I actually haven't looked yet um, to see if there are any um, support systems out there because it would be nice to have someone who is going through it to understand to speak with um or even just to hear people talk about it and see how they deal with it and you know different treatments that are coming up and and stuff like that and you know how they just learned how to deal with with life again um because it's kind of like picking up a few pieces at a time over when you're sick, you know, you pick up a piece here, you pick up a piece here, and nothing ever seems to really come together. And then all of a sudden you look at it and you're like, there's the picture on the box, you know, and it clicks. And that's what I'm hoping that this was, is that the right people got together. <laughs> Sorry. Looked at my case and realized that this was not a way for anybody to live. Being in and out of hospital and everything that I've lost in the last year and a half has been extremely difficult. I've had challenges that I've never had to face before. Um, I died twice. <laughs> I have been poked and prodded and I am grateful for every single needle stick and every single blood test and every single, you know, x-ray and MRI and, you know, I'm so lucky to live in Canada where this is, you know, free and, and whatnot, but it's still an illness, you know, and uh, 
sorry. I haven't really, like, oh no, cried cried yet because I just sort of get like little periods of like, oh, you know, it's a lot of information and um, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm still kind of, you know, groggy and stuff sometimes and my mom has been a godsend because she has come to every doctor's appointment with me. She has been there for every doctor's visit in the hospital because I can't remember sometimes or I had just gotten meds and I didn't remember. Um, so she's been amazing and I I wouldn't have been able to go through this without her. Uh, and I don't know if she watches these. <laughs> Um, if she does, if you do, Ma, you know I love you, man. <laughs> you know I love you, and I wouldn't be able to do this without you. Um, it, it, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, so, I start Wednesday. Um, I will be vlogging Every couple days, I'll put a couple of days together. It's going to take me a bit to learn how to vlog. Um, and I got to know if I need permission and all that stuff. But because there's not that much stuff out there about this, I want to make it more public. Um, and I want people to understand that just because somebody looks normal and looks like they're healthy underneath, it could be an ocean of, of fire and brimstone. And, and you have no idea because... All we do is put smiles on our faces and try and get through the day. And I will get through the day. I will get through each day. I will take it on and I have, you know, a support system through my mom and my grandma and um, my medical teams. It's, it's the beginning of answers and... I am okay with that for right now because it's better than just what was happening before in terms of symptoms, treatment, discharge, symptoms, treatment, discharge. This this may not, like I said, this may not stop everything from coming back again, but it could be manageable at home instead of in the hospital, which is just such a relief. So with that, I'm going to say... The more you comment, the more you subscribe, the more you share this, the more the message is going to get out there. And I think it's an important one because with life the way it is and people's health going the way it is, I think immunodeficiency disorders are going to be something that are very common soon uh, because of the amount of resistant strains of things that are out there nowadays so um yeah so I will be bringing you along on my journey um this is raw um I won't be doing my makeup and all that kind of stuff all the time and whatnot if I'm not feeling good I'm not feeling good and I'm gonna listen to my body and I'm gonna take the next week or so just to kind of gather my thoughts and see how I feel after my first treatment. And uh, and that's it for now. So like I said, please, guys, share. Um, share on YouTube. Share on Facebook. Share on uh, all the social medias. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, I would be more than happy to do a Q&A. So if you want to send me... Um, either direct messages through Twitter or F F Facebook or YouTube or direct message me on YouTube uh, or even put it in the comments. I am I will absolutely um, answer your questions. And it can be any question. I don't care what it is. It doesn't have to be uh, about this particular issue. Um, it could be uh, anything. Um, I'm trying to... Trying to open myself up more, which is difficult. I'm very, I'm a very independent person, so it's uh, I'm opening myself up, 
and that's I think that's what I need to do in terms of acceptance and and all of that so next time I see you hopefully it will be through the lens of my new camera um thank you guys for listening and thank you guys for being there I know it's not like we can talk back and forth but um it's sort of like therapy <laughs> um and that's it so I will post again maybe tomorrow night uh an actual vlog vlog if I can freaking figure out how to do it <laughs> I feel so like 107 years old at times with technology but what are you gonna do anyway like I said like comment subscription is also you know uh so important but uh comment like and subscribe for sure okay uh i want to wish you guys a good night and i'll see you tomorrow okay bye